What's up, weirdos? Shade Tree Surgeon here. I am a 39-year-old man talking to a camera in my kitchen about his weight. Yes, I know, this is supposed to be a motorcycle channel, but it's never been a motorcycle channel. It's just been a channel ran by a guy who loves motorcycles pretty much more than anything else. I also love being alive, and that's why I started making this series about losing weight, because I knew that if I didn't lose weight, I was going to die. 39 years old, I started this at 300 and almost 325 pounds, I think, 322 or 23, whatever it was. I'm down to about 305 right now, which is cool, I guess. It's nice, uh, but it doesn't feel like I've lost anything. I'm 20 pounds is a lot. For most people, that's a huge deal. But for me, at over 300 pounds, it feels like nothing. Can't let myself think it's something, though. I gotta keep reminding myself that that's a great start. It's been an emotional roller coaster for me getting into dieting. Not so much the exercising part. That's usually pretty enjoyable. I love riding my dirt bike. I actually enjoy going to the gym. Sometimes I don't always want to go, but when I do go, I like it. It's the dieting, because with me, food was a reward. It was a reward when I was sad. It was a reward when I was happy. It was a reward for a job well done. It was a reward for, you know, a, a loss to console myself. Like, there was never a time when I didn't figure out some way, my stupid lizard brain didn't figure out some way to reward myself with food. Well, the reward for all that is weighing over 320 pounds. So I had to do something about it. It's been an emotional roller coaster because now I find like, how do I reward myself? And the real answer is you don't always get a reward. Sometimes you just got to wake up, pull your boots on, and freaking do it, man. Not, there's not a reward for every little action in the world. But again, that's still like I'm dealing with my psyche here, so sometimes that's hard to process. So I've been up and down. I felt like I was depressed for a little while, and then I'd break out of it, then I'd feel depressed again, and then, you know, I'd give in to my cravings and eat something I shouldn't have as a reward, which spirals me down into the, oh my god, I can't believe I've done this. It's been strange, and a lot of you guys are joining me on this, and you've been watching since the beginning. So I know you know what I'm talking about. I also have talked to enough of you and read enough of these comments to know that a lot of us are pretty similar, so what I'm saying probably makes a whole lot of sense for a lot of people out there. Anyway, I'm taking these down to once every other week because for the next nine months, we're giving away a motorcycle every two weeks on the Shade Tree Surgeon channel. It's amazing. It takes up a lot of my time and it's very hectic and can be very stressful trying to figure it out, but we're doing a live stream every other week giving away that motorcycle and calling a winner, so I don't like to live stream and release a video on the same day. So for the next foreseeable future, we'll see how that goes. But I think unless I move that date around, we're probably going to take this to every other week. But I don't ever know what's going to happen. Anyway, I hadn't made a video in over a week about my weight loss, about my progress. Well, 305 still, it's not really any progress. But we're back in it. I want to start logging my meals again. I want to start talking to you guys about what works for me, what doesn't work for me. And of course, get the feedback. Because trust me, I read through every comment and a lot of useful information in there. People who don't read through the comments are missing so much. Right now, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I've been up since 7 a.m. working. Um, I've had a couple of like, some nuts as a snack throughout the day, which I feel kind of weird about. I'm trying not to snack, but my body just felt like it needed it. I was feeling very tired. But it's time to eat lunch. And for lunch, it's going to be steak and salad, baby. At some point, I'm probably going to have to stop eating so much red meat. When I started doing like the, the kind of the keto thing, I just always gravitate towards like hamburger, steak. All, all this red meat's a flap steak. Uh, right now, it's mock tenderloins that I got. Like, that's probably Probably not going to be good for me in the long run. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'll do chicken sometimes. And it always ends up being chicken thighs, not chicken breasts. What do you guys eat at home when it comes to meat, when it comes to flesh? We don't call it when it comes to the protein. Call it flesh. Let's call it what it is. It's not protein that's insulting to the animal that gave it to you. It's flesh. Now let's cook up some cow flesh. You know, I guess it's not very manly to talk about how much you love lettuce and green stuff. Everyone's like, I don't want to eat the food that my food eats, but I do. I love lettuce. I love onions. I love cucumbers. And I'll be honest, I really hate that mentality of like, I don't eat green stuff. That's for sissies, for soy boys. I'm like, dude, I love lettuce. I love a salad. I just want to put steak on it too. Mm, cucumbers, not just for the bedroom anymore. My leftover cucumbers is I just cut them up and I stick them in some red wine vinegar. I eat that all the time. Of course, I love pickles, so the red wine vinegar and cucumbers is really close to pickles. This used to be our movie theater snack when I was a kid. Anybody says they don't eat rabbit food, how can you not love an onion, man? You gotta eat a red onion like an apple. I'm sure my grandfather used to do that. He would eat onions like apples. Not all the time, but I definitely saw him do it before. Probably my only who the hell do you think you are ingredient is, man, I just love goat cheese in a salad dude. it's so freaking good like a fancy boy over here with his dope cheese all right 
Guys, the microwave beeps, perfect timing. I'm in the kitchen, it's about 3.47 in the afternoon and I just finished up editing for the day. Today, it's Wednesday and it's definitely one of those days that makes it harder to do anything, like productive, but also is really good for fasting. A lot of times what happens, especially during the week, is when I had to leave this weekend for Alabama, I was gone so long, I didn't have time to edit. So I ended up having to film stuff today and edit for a video that's coming out in like two hours. So the entire morning, woke up at you know 8 a.m., the entire morning has been spent and sitting at the computer desk, filming, editing, and getting the video ready. It's very hectic. I do like it. It is fun. I like, you know, my back against the wall is kind of fun. And also, like I'm sitting at the computer desk, there's no time to eat because I literally can't waste a second. So I'm having my first meal now, and it's some uh, chicken thighs that I had left over. I batch cooked. I'll just cook the whole box of them. And then I've got these extreme, dude. These are Tony Hawk's burrito wraps. Travis Pastrami over here. That's how they eat their sandwiches. Extreme wellness. They're kind of ridiculous, but I do love sandwiches. I love wraps and they're only seven grams of carbs. So, you know, I'm trying to stay away from carbs, but I'm also allowing myself to live. And if I can't have a sandwich and I'm not gonna have a sandwich, having a wrap is almost as good. Sometimes I like it better. It's not quite neck and neck, maybe like second to sandwich or burger, but it definitely fulfills that craving that the human being has to wrap something edible around something else that's edible and then eat that thing. That is a craving that humans get for some reason. And I don't know why, but I am but man, I'm a, I'm a monkey and I crave that. I don't care who you are, baby. It ain't a sandwich without LTO, dude. I gotta have that lettuce, tomato, and onion, man. I don't care if it's rabid food. I don't wanna eat a sandwich unless it's got that on it. You know, rap is just a kind of a fancy way of saying white people burrito, but that's all right, it's still good. Just got back from the gym. Oh, I did something I did a little different today. I did my weights, I did my machines, but I always do the bike too because I feel like what I probably need more than anything is cardio. I want my breath back. I can't really run because of my foot because it's got so much metal in it and some of it's broken, but if the need arise, I would like to be able to run. The gym was really busy, but it forced me to do something that I felt like worked really well. My normal 10 to 15 minutes on the stationary bike to get myself like kind of warmed up. Then I did two machines, I were chest and arms. The other machines I was gonna do was taken and I don't feel comfortable enough with how I know how to work out to really use free weights yet. So I go, okay, well, I'm just gonna go back on the bike for 10 more minutes. Got off that and I did a couple more machines and I was like, well, I feel like I'm working way harder now than I normally do. And I went back and I did the bike again. So I feel like breaking up my cardio on the bike and breaking up lifting weights in between that, I feel like that kept my heart rate elevated at a, at a, at a much higher level. I know there's a lot of people who are a lot smarter than me that comment. So one, no one of you guys will tell me if that's something that works well or not. It felt like it worked well for me. It's been a very weird week week. Very strange week. It was stressful, sad, and also at the same time, uh, strangely motivating. So more on that in a little while. After. And breakfast is turkey sausage. I don't even know who I am anymore. What kind of man eats turkey sausage? It doesn't sound very cool or very good or very tough. I will tell you the turkey sausage tastes just like regular sausage, man. I really can't tell the difference. Delicious. I woke up, I worked out, I showered myself, I ate, time to get some work done. Not really work when we're fixing up this cool KZ-1000. It doesn't really feel like work, even though I'm working on brakes on it today, which is not always my favorite thing to do, but that's all right. I'd much rather spend a day messing with my least favorite part to mess with on a motorcycle than a day doing anything else. Still haven't found it in me quite the right way to say what bothered me so much, but I'm gonna work on this KZ, think about it, and I'm also waiting for Richard Boom to show up because you know what? You gotta take care of the people who've taken care of you, and Richard did so much for me over the course of my life. Gave me a trade, gave me a business, taught me how to run a business. So I always try to take care of him. He's not super internet savvy. I mean, he's 72. Although I'm sure there are some people watching right now who are 72. Uh, when it comes to ordering parts for his motorcycle, he really doesn't know how to do it online. So I usually do it for him and then like conveniently forget to tell him how much it costs. So it's just my way of helping out somebody who's helped me out a lot.
What's up, weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and it's time for another group ride. This time to the Rats and Wrath Market. You know, we always love supporting our girl Kirby over at Rats and Wrath, so we're all gonna get together and we're gonna do an invasion of her market. An invasion of crusty, dirty hobo swamp wizards. Join us! We're meeting up tomorrow, Saturday the 13th, at 3 o'clock at the American Legion Post 111. The address to that will be the location of this video, and I'll also have it written down below. After having a beer at American Legion, then the invasion of the Rats and Wrath Market at the Orpheum begins at the Orpheum's new location, which is the old location of Southern Grounds. I'm super excited for this one. There's a lot of awesome people here, some people you've seen at previous markets, and of course, Brapstar and Chalice are gonna be there. We're gonna have shirts, gas caps, rolling trays, stickers, and a little bit of everything in between. If anybody needs an SNS Super or uh, some shocks, there's gonna be some for sale there. Let me know down below if you can make it. I'll see you at the American Legion, and if you can't meet us there, just meet us at the Orpheum. See you on Saturday. You know, I just can't seem to get what I want to say out. Not that it's that hard to say. Uh, I think uh, getting on a motorcycle, especially this motorcycle, I think that'll cure what ails me. One of the things I really like about this Buell, besides uh, everything, because it's just <sighs> riding this bike, you know you're really on an enthusiast bike. It's designed by somebody who liked bikes so hard. You know, each one of these was built by hand. These early Buells had no assembly line. The team that built them worked on one single bike until it was done. That's just like the level of devotion you're talking about here. You're talking about a guy who mortgaged his house, sold everything he owned, and put himself just like on the brink of ruin to start a race team. Like this dude loves motorcycles and when you're on this bike and you know it's truly built by an enthusiast it really shows man i don't know man something about being on a bike i know some people say they like to get on a bike because it makes them think about nothing and i don't know what is different about me but if i have something i really need to think about like not even clear my head it's not like i need to clear my head and get the thoughts out of my head it's just or you know maybe that is it maybe that is what it is you gonna let me through buddy Maybe it is something like that because, you know, you use all four limbs to control these bikes you're on and it takes up enough extra brain power. It leaves ju just enough for me to think about what I'm trying to say or maybe, you know, worry over a problem. And maybe worry is the wrong word, but just decide how I feel about something because usually there's about a hundred different things going on in front of me and in front of my brain and it's kind of hard to focus on one thing and figure out how I really feel about it. I don't know. I know I can't be the only one that's like that. Oh. I talked about this on Shaylisi's Twitch stream, uh, and I obviously mentioned at the beginning part of it in the video where we picked up the Lincoln Mark III. Uh, while we were filming the 71 Lincoln Mark III video, uh, I was in a Walmart parking lot. I was actually just going in there to get a tripod because I'd forgotten <laughs> gotten mine at home. I was driving through the parking lot. Ooh, <laughs> the whole bike got air off of that one. I was driving through the parking lot, and I saw a guy. To me, it looked like he was trying to crack his back on, uh, on the cart return, which made me look at him because it seemed really odd and then he fell over so I stopped the truck immediately and I jumped out ran over so trying to see what was up with him you know older guy but not that old he looked like he was probably in his 60s I would say slightly overweight but nowhere near as overweight as I am that's for sure I mean he didn't weigh over 300 pounds you know he just looked like a normal amount to be overweight for an American dude in his 60s but really what's a normal amount there's no normal amount to be overweight being overweight is abnormal the guy was just regaining consciousness as I I got over to him he couldn't have been unconscious for very long as i got over and he was trying to get i asked him to stay down stay down but he got up as people as people will do of course asked him if he was all right uh he asked all the questions to see if he was possibly having a heart attack he said no to everything he just said that he was dizzy and another lady walked up and i just go i'm gonna call 911 but you know you you fell down in the middle of a parking lot there's something is up you know so i'm trying to call 911 and this lady's trying to stop him from leaving and then he starts getting real upset and let me tell you man uh you know i just let him go at that point for a second until i parked because you can't restrain someone but you can't force them to have care. And he was getting irate enough with this lady who was a little older who was trying to hold his arm that I was worried that this could turn into like an assault and battery case real quick, you know? But I kept my eye out and I saw what car he got into as I parked my truck. Uh, David from Forgotten Angels, he pulled up motorcycle pretty much right the second as I stepped out of my truck. And I told him, I was like, hey, there's this guy over there in that silver Honda. 
Yeah, he fell down, and that's all David needed to hear. David was rushing over there on his motorcycle immediately, and he got over there, and I seen him, and he was pounding on the window and waving me over, so I already knew it was bad. I ran over there, and the guy was non-responsive in his car. He was breathing, but he was non-responsive. Luckily, he left the door open, so I opened the door. I felt for a pulse. He had a pulse. He was breathing. David called 911, was telling him to hurry up. He had a pulse, was breathing, but he was non-responsive besides some moaning. I was still monitoring his pulse while well, David was on the phone with uh, with the ambulance and he had a very, very faint pulse, but he did stop breathing. And at that point, I pulled him out of the car and I started doing CPR. Now, mind you, I haven't done CPR since George Bush was president. Bush Jr., by the way, not Bush Sr. I'm not that old. But if you've ever had to do CPR on somebody and I've had to do CPR on someone before, it's not something you forget. Even though they have changed it now and I know there's no, there's no more mouth to mouth. The last time I got certified, you were still like give people air, which I did. Regardless of that even though I started with mouth to mouth I just continued with the compressions after that because I had remembered that in the new CPR there was no more mouth to mouth it was just chest compressions oh I did chest compressions which if you've ever done CPR or seen it done it is incredibly violent looking you really like you break people's ribs uh, it looks like their stomachs popping out it, it when you're doing CPR on someone it looks like you're trying to kill them. It does not look like you're trying to save them. Like if you didn't know about CPR and you walked up on somebody doing CPR on somebody, you would be like, call, call the freaking cops, dude. This dude's over here murdering this guy. Very nice to be able to put a low fuel light in there because I would have just uh, kept putting on along and ran out of gas. He did cough and take a big breath as soon as I stopped doing CPR when the paramedics got there, but that just shouldn't really fill you full of hope because that doesn't mean much. The body will reflexively breathe after death for a while, like big gasps. If you've ever seen somebody die, like somebody take their last breaths, the body will keep on kind of like gasping for air just reflexively um, as they're dying. So that didn't really fill me full of any kind of hope. But, you know, the paramedics had him. So, you know, I was like, man, hopefully, hopefully the guy makes it. You know, he's sure he's got a family. He's got people who love him. And, uh, you know, what a horrible thing to have to go through. Well, the paramedics took him away. And, and later I found out that he unfortunately passed away and was pronounced dead at the hospital. My heart goes out to his family. Uh, what a horrible thing to have to go through. Obviously, I don't know them. I don't know him from Adam, you know, and I, my only interaction with the guy was a few words. So like, I don't know the guy at all. So I don't necessarily feel sad about it, but I do obviously for anybody who loses a loved one, you know, you know feel bad for their family. There ain't no stab and grab sauce, but I guess it'll have to do. Holy crap, dude. This thing holds almost five gallons of gas. It's a damn sight better than the Sportster. So it is supposed to be a sport touring bike. So having three gallons of gas really wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, I like this bike. I'll tell you, I compartmentalized pretty well, so I wasn't really shooken up by having to do CPR randomly and learning even that the guy died or any of that stuff. Just I, I'm, not, I'm not a cold-hearted in any way, I don't think, but it's not the kind of stuff that I let upset me. I can be upset for the man's family and upset that a, that a human being passed away, but I'm not, like, personally upset. And not because I'm cold and uncaring, only because I try not to let stuff like that upset me, and I, over the years, I've gotten pretty good at not letting it affect me. I think that is a point for me, <laughs> not a point against me. Come on, Chief. What are you doing? I'm just trying to exist over here. These people need to go ahead and take it easy. Anyway, what really affected me later uh, was something that was personal to me. Yeah, I guess you could say, like, why are you thinking about yourself? Somebody else passed away, and I, you know, I don't know. I, I didn't know the guy, you know, and I feel for him, and I feel for his family, but I didn't know the man. So, of course, like, I'm not really thinking that hard about him, but it's later on, I watching the paramedics do CPR, you don't really think about what CPR looks like too much when you're doing it, but watching somebody else do it, like watching somebody pump on another person's chest while they lay on their back and a crowd starting to gather in a Walmart parking lot. I didn't think about it at the time. I just kind of waited. But the next day, I was just thinking about that and thinking about what that looks like. That guy's in his 60s and I'm way fatter than that guy is. Way fatter. Like, I, he, I'm so much more overweight. I mean, like I said, he probably weighed like a little, little over 200 pounds. Like, he definitely had some extra weight on him, but he was not fat by any stretch of the imagination. Well, I mean, he was though, because 
I just, I have a different idea of what overweight is. Here in America, we have a much different idea of what overweight is. Like, it's, it, he was overweight. If you couldn't tell where this was going already, even before this happened, I was already starting to get a little freaked out about how much red meat I was eating on the ketogenic diet. And the turkey sausage was after I did CPR. So that was like the really that push to get me over the edge to stop eating red meat because I just was looking down going like, man, that could be how I spend my last moments with a group of strangers standing around me in a parking lot while somebody just pumps on my chest and everyone just goes, you know, walks around and goes so sad. I feel so bad for his family. How sad is that? Like, man, that, it re that really struck me. It's just imagining looking down at myself in that same scenario, because guess what? If I don't do anything about my weight, that scenario could probably happen to me a lot sooner than it happened to that guy, because I'm in, even though I, I'm physical every day and I'm active and all these things, like, man, I've just been eating a ton of red meat. I'm, I'm a way over 300 pounds. Like, God, it really just was a, not a wake up call, because I already had my wake up call, but definitely the next day when I started thinking about it and imagining myself in that same scenario and imagine how easy I could find myself in that scenario really was a kick in the gut. And even though in my heart of hearts, I will be forever third grade, pee pee poo poo, farts are funny, I have to admit being forever young does not count for your body. I've officially passed the threshold where the number one thing that would kill me is an accident into the realm of the number one thing that will kill me is heart disease. And I'll tell you this, you don't wear what I'm wearing on my frame if you're going to go do battle against heart disease, okay? The amount of extra weight I'm, I'm carrying and you know, the red meat thing just started to freak me out and I'm going like, holy crap, dude, that could so easily, so easily be me. We had looked through his car afterwards to find some clue of who he was, what was going on, maybe a phone number we could call, and we found paperwork in there that was for heart disease, cardiovascular scans and stuff like that. And so there you go, dude. That's exactly, exactly it. And man, I don't even, I don't even go to the freaking doctor to find out if something is wrong in the first place. So I'm really just, it, it put me right into that mode of this really isn't just a diet. And I know everybody says this in the comments and I should have, I should have paid attention to it harder or should have given it more credence. This isn't a diet. This isn't a, a, a diet. It's not the ketogenic diet. It's not the carnivore diet. It's not and anything like that. What this is, is it has to be a complete lifestyle change. The lifestyle I'm living now, I ain't going to be living long. Seeing that guy on the ground, well, people did CPR and everybody stood around and sh shook their heads and talked about how sad it was and said I hope he meant some people saying I hope he makes it you got it praising the paramedics people saying that I did good people were going like oh man look you look what you did that's I mean that I really didn't spend that too much time thinking about that but all I could think about was that exact same scenario would happen around me and I can be in that position much quicker than I might think. Now everyone keeps saying live fast, die young, but it's more like live fat, die young. I, I, I promise you, man, and the feeling of starting to slow down and the feeling of it starting to affect me, coming to that age where people are saying, man, you better go get a cardiogram, you better go get checked. You're at that age where stuff starts to happen and you've been carrying around this weight for this long, man, your heart has to work a whole hell of a lot harder when you're carrying around this weight. Sometimes it makes me feel feel like a hypocrite for loving fast motorcycles so much. I mean, I like slow bikes too, pretty much anything with two wheels. Makes me feel like a little bit of a hypocrite because this is a dangerous activity. And so how am I sitting here being so freaked out and so concerned about my weight and all that kind of stuff when I engage in life-threatening activities seven days a week? I don't know what the difference is. Maybe it's wearing a helmet. Maybe it's riding smart, not taking unnecessary chances. Although like taking unnecessary chances can be very fun. Yeah, taking unnecessary chances is going to be really fun. And you know what? Cake tastes good too. I definitely recognize the hypocrisy there, but I still think I'm right. I still think that the quality of life, I want to I live to continue to do this dangerous activity. This is the dangerous activity I like. I think I like this dangerous activity much more than I like the dangerous activity of eating a shit ton of peanut M&Ms. If I had to pick one, I'm picking bikes, baby. This is way better than peanut M&Ms. It's way better than candy. It's way better than McDonald's. And if I want to continue to live to do this dangerous activity, if I want to continue to be able to enjoy bikes at the level I enjoy them now, well, something's got to go. Nobody lives forever and you don't get everything you want. I unfortunately, like everybody else, cannot have my cake and eat it too. But having the cake that is fast motorcycles, yeah, I like that one.
pretty funny that you got to take care of yourself and take care of your heart and eat less and eat right and exercise just so you can be alive to do tons of dangerous things. <laughs> like, no more candy, get up early, eat your Wheaties, do your burpees and your push-ups and eat right so you can live another day and be healthy enough to do something really dangerous and risk your life. Such is the duality of Shade Tree Surgeon. Such is the duality of man. Hey man, I don't make the rules. I'm just trying to exist here and have a good time where I can. And if I did make the rules, I'd be able to eat all the candy and steak I wanted to, all right? But when they were creating uh, what candy did to your body, nobody checked in with me, okay? And they really should have, because I would have made it way healthier for you. But hey, here we are. And I think most people out there, most people watching these videos, because I know y'all, I think most of y'all are going to choose fast motorcycles over candy if you're going to choose one way to die. And not that I'm planning on dying on a motorcycle. People say that I don't want to die while I'm riding. I don't want to die while I'm riding. I want to die at 101 years old with a naked chick on top of me. That's what I want to do. Preferably multiple naked chicks. I mean, if we're getting to choose how we die, that's how I'm going out. Ah, yes, another entry into the duality of man. I must shed the flesh upon my body so I might live to a ripe old age and choose to be smothered to death by the flesh of a beautiful woman. Feeling better already. You know, I started out this ride kind of feeling down, feeling weird. Definitely not feeling my best. I think that's why riding motorcycles counts as therapy. I mean, kind of. Riding your motorcycle, it's kind of like shower thoughts on steroids. I started out this ride feeling kind of weird, a little down in the dumps, unsure, uh, kind of wary of the future. And uh, now that I've been on my bike and argued with myself <laughs> my own mind a little bit and talked about my feelings that I couldn't, I couldn't quite articulate before, even in my own head, man. I like bike, baby. That's what it does for you. Anyway, time to get home because this video that I'm recording right now comes out in a couple hours. So uh, <laughs> let's go edit it. Ah, maybe a few more miles. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around on this really weird, really long Friday video where we talk about life, death, weight loss and motorcycles and all things dangerous in between. I hope I see you guys on that ride that's coming up on Saturday, May the 13th. Like I said earlier in the vid, meeting at the American Legion post 111, then riding over to the new Orpheum to Kirby's Rats and Wrath Market. It's always a good time. And of course, also don't forget that the Buell that was just in this video, you could win in a raffle. One week from today, we're pulling the winner for that Buell, a year 2000 Buell Thunderbolt. I'll have a link to grab one of those raffle tickets down below. 100% of that goes directly to charity. So grab one and make sure next Friday the 19th that you got your telephone on you if you got one of these because we're calling someone. That's going to about do it for this one, y'all. Until next time, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Panic spreading far and wide Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree Army Shade tree Army Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree? They never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.